Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from worldwide. I'm Sterling, and it's great to have you back on the channel. Uh, this show is being recorded for Sunday, March 17, 2024. As always, these shows are provided for entertainment purposes only. All the information I share with you comes directly real time through my guides, angels, extended spiritual counsel, ETs, famous people from history, so for entertainment purposes only. Also, for those of you to reach me, just go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com, look for the book a session tab, very straightforward from there. And if you get a chance, just remember to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all those things really help the channel. Thanks very much. Uh, if you watch the channel all the time, you know that we uh, take questions from our community board. We put out uh, requests for questions on Mondays. That community board is located on our YouTube channel. Uh, I think this week we had over 400 questions, and then my wife does pare them down to try to get a representative grouping of questions that we feel will be most helpful to everybody. I think we had 75 questions this week. I look at them real time with you here, answer them real time. Um, because we're getting so many questions, we've actually decided to pare these down into two separate shows. So you're actually watching part one, and we'll we'll post part two also simultaneously at the same time on Sunday. So uh, this is part one of a two-part show. So we'll get through roughly 37 questions in this show, and then we'll also do another roughly 37 questions in part two. So hopefully that helps. You know, as we go through these shows, uh, we do try to always draw back an inference and a reference to uh, to real news stories. So as my guides and angels answer questions, we always try to, as those then materialize, those predictions materialize in the world and in the press, uh, we always try to put up what's called a hot off the press on the community board. And uh, so people can keep track and and really understand that there, there's a large, you know, there's a larger plan in the universe. So it kind of draws an inference back to reality and what's happening in the universe uh, and how we're all being guided down here. So this week, we actually had, I think, five hot off the presses, and I took some quick notes before I started the show. Uh, the first one was the major Russia fire in Moscow, right near Moscow. That was actually a world record. That was an unfinished, I think, high-rise apartment complex. Uh, that's a hot off the press. The second was a large documents release in the 45 trial. I think it was 100,000 documents released. I think it was by the DOJ, if I remember correctly. 100,000 documents. Uh, number three was the Fani Willis ruling in Georgia, which allows her to stay on that RICO case. Uh, the fourth was the Biden administration's release of uh, more than $300 million of uh, military aid and funding for Ukraine. And my, my team completely saw that was going to take place. And then the fifth one was uh, now the final outcome of the new real estate industry business model that kind of uh, pairs down that 6% mandatory commission uh, where the seller was required to pay their broker and the, and the buyer's broker as well. Um, so the whole new business model. But all those hot off the presses along with the news articles, uh, you can find those up on our community board. And just gives you kind of a good way to track and pare down uh, kind of what's going on. Uh, so with no further ado, let's get going on today's show again for Sunday, March 17, 2024. This is part one. Uh, question 74 in the countdown. Good morning, Sterling. When will Marjorie Taylor Greene be voted out of the House of Representatives? I get the next election cycle, and I get that it's going to be, looks like a man may come in to take her place. So that's what they're showing me. I know it's a very red district, but uh, uh, to me, they're showing me that it looks like by the next election cycle, she won't be voted back in. 73, hello, Sterling and team. Uh, will we ever know who killed John Benet Ramsey? Absolutely. And you're going to know just in a few short months here, this has come up on a couple of other shows. Uh, I think as much as like half a year ago, six months ago or something, even then a year ago, my team was saying there'd be new DNA evidence coming out that would actually link uh, the killer to that, that particular crime. And I've always seen that whoever it is, is, is someone in uniform. Uh, it was, that couldn't be exactly what kind of uniform, but it's somebody that was known in the community and actually had committed uh, other uh, murders. So very unfortunate. But within a few short months here, well, it looks like we'll actually, the world will know exactly uh, who the murder was of John JonBenet Ramsey. 72, 
Hi, Sterling and team. Do you foresee that 45's allies are going to buy TikTok? Because uh, I just noticed Stephen Munchen, Munchen saying that he was putting together a group of investors and millionaires so they can buy TikTok. You know, um, I don't see his efforts, uh, Stephen Munchen, Munchen, uh, Munchen, sorry, I don't see his efforts are going to be successful. It looks like another offshore entity is going to buy that subsidiary TikTok from ByteDance, which is the parent company. Um, so it's another offshore company that's going to do it. And they may do it with, with what's called a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition uh, vehicle. Uh, it's a financial model. You know, what's interesting is it looks like, uh, you know, the horses are out of the barn. So a lot of the data uh, for people on their mobile phones has already been compromised. So even kind of moving TikTok, the subsidiary, out of ByteDance, um, kind of the damage has already been done. So everybody, you know, be careful out there. But uh, looks like the horses are out of the barn, but I, I don't see Stephen's efforts being successful. 71. Hi, Sterling. Do you see the TikTok ban going through? If so, how will this affect creators who use it for their livelihood? Um, there's going to be somewhat of a temporary ban uh, as it kind of changes hands here. Um, it's going to take some time, but it looks like it'll end up being restored, but then you know, we'll have new owners. So there'll be a bit of a disruption uh, coming uh, as it changes ownership uh, at some point here. Uh, but when the dust settles, it looks like TikTok uh, will still be used. I don't see it being uh, ever used on government mobile devices. It looks like that's going to be a fait complete. It's not going to happen any longer. Uh, but as far as consumers, it looks like they'll still have some access to the platform. 70, hello, Sterling. This evening I saw my nearby community of Indian Lake, Ohio, completely devastated by a large tornado. It is utterly heartbreaking to witness the destruction and casualties. My question is this, will we ever have a technology that we can deploy to mitigate or even dissipate severe storms and tornadoes like this? I do see that within three decades, we're going to have satellite technology that will disrupt weather patterns. So it'll be ways to, the, the satellite, I call it weather satellite technology, we'll be able to disrupt uh, airstreams and redirect airstreams uh, and kind of recapitulate how you have high pressures and low pressure zones. So in that way, it looks like it will be able to disrupt weather patterns and be able to make them safer. But we're about three decades away from a successful deployment of that technology. I mean, there'll be a roll-up to it, but it looks like it'll, it'll take a while to get implemented and be successful. 69, Sterling. Previously indicated ETs are working with humans to develop free energy. Will this technology ever be available to the general public? And if yes, when? You know, it's important to break down the topic of free energy into two separate uh, uh, talk streams. You know, I think a lot of time people, uh, when they talk about free energy, they're talking about from an economic or financial standpoint, let's say free energy to the home at no charge. There's also a quantum mechanics, a physics version of what's called free energy. So it's the physics, quantum mechanics version of free energy is what extraterrestrials are working on and helping uh, world governments with. What that means is from a physics standpoint, that's that's a like a nuclear reaction Think about like a cold fusion reaction that you get more energy out of the reaction than you have to put in. Or from a physics standpoint, nothing because you're technical, you get more work out of the uh, reaction, nuclear reaction, than you have to put into it, thereby creates what they call free energy. So free energy will be highly efficient. Um, it, it won't produce all the hydrocarbons and the problems we have with our atmosphere. Uh, in terms of the economic uh definition of free energy many many decades well many decades before let's say effectively free energy will be available in the home let's say they won't cost you anything uh but the prices will start coming down It'll always co be cost in distributing it to the homes for the next couple of decades but then we'll have some in many decades uh free energy from a quantum physics standpoint uh, power plants in the home so it might be a, a longer answer than the person we're looking for but it's important to always say when you talk about free energy, there's an economic uh, portion to the equation of talk track and also quantum physics one.
68, will the U.S. ever join other countries in banning food ingredients that aren't actual food? Places like the U.K. ban many of the ingredients that are allowed here in the U.S. Yes, you know, within a few short years, this is going to be a very common practice for the U.S., and they've already started. Many of the food companies have already started doing this, uh, but you're going to see more regulations now in removing uh, unnatural food ingredients. You know, a lot of it's driven by economic factors, financial factors. So it's like putting elements in food that give it a much longer shelf life, make it easier to transport so you have less spoilage, right? So there's going to be new technology coming that will use natural foods to prevent spoilage. So it's all coming. Within a few short years here in the U.S., we're going to start to see more and more of this aggressively, and the food supply will gradually get better. Mm -hmm. 67. Will the Catholic Church ever ordain women? Will the role of Pope cease? What is the future of the Catholic Church as we know it now? Well, I'll take the first two. Uh, I do see within about 10 years there's going to be a female pope. So the, the role of pope in the Catholic Church will still change. You know, in terms of the third part of this question, I've always seen the Catholic Church becoming much more moderate and much more accommodating to all groups of people, even like LGBTQ plus uh, groups. And, you know, it's going to be much more moderate and, and much more the way that extraterrestrials handle their civilization. You know, ETs by and large are much more evolved than humanity is. They see everybody as much more equal and much more elevated understanding of what's going on in the universe. Uh, but I, I see the Catholic Church moving that direction slowly. But I do see, seriously, I see a female pope within about 10 years. 66, high sterling. You've indicated uh, Joe Biden would be reelected and also indicated a Republican would be elected in 2028. Is that still true? In addition, you indicated in 2032 a Democrat would be elected. Yes, my team still sees all of that. I see that whatever Republican is elected in 2028, they look to be more moderate. Uh, it looks like a man to me, but somebody more along the, the ilk, if you will, or line with like a Liz Cheney. I, I mean, a little more moderate uh, Republican, but it does look like a Republican makes it in to the presidency in 2028. Then in 2032, my, my team has been showing me it's going to be a female president. It'll be a Democratic female president. So got a few chapters, a few cycles here in the presidential election cycle. Uh, but uh, by and large, my, my angelic and guide team still see it the way um, they've been sharing it with you. 65, high Sterling and team. Fonnie Willis is up for re-election this year. Also, Judge Scott McAfee is up for retaining his judgeship. How will things go for both of them? I do see both of them will be reelected to their positions. It looks like a continuation of their uh, their career in those areas. 64, I was recently told there are issues from my previous past life that are creating blockages in this life. Is there a way to clear or heal these blockages? So first off, you know, I talk to my team about this subject all the time. There are not blockages from your prior life that are stopping you in this life. So no reason to say remove blockages. We always move forward. We do take life lessons that we learned in prior lifetimes and bring them into this lifetime. So everything you're experiencing in this lifetime is related to your life path blueprint, what you laid out for this life. And there's no concern here for some sort of a blockage from a prior life. Everything that you would, and there really are no blockages per se. There are, let's say, there are major traumas, things we all have to get through, but they're always related to the life you're in, the current lifetime. So I know I hear that from a lot of individuals. They say, I can't get through something because I've done something uh, insurmountable in a prior lifetime is blocking this time. The simple answer is no, it's really not the case. It's everything that's occurring in this lifetime. So what's nice is it's all very manageable concrete and you're kind of able to uh in, in some respects you know break it apart take a look at it what's going on this lifetime 63 hello sterling i was wondering if now that lara trump is co-chair of the rnc and has said that her number one concern is getting her father-in-law re-elected or elected will this impact the campaigns and electability of all the other Republican candidates as they stand for election? Will it mean that there is no money for them, their campaigns, or any legal challenges of election results in November? 
Well, it, it's all going to significantly affect other candidates in the Republican races because a lot of the money is going to be grifted uh, over to 45 and his legal defense. And I, I read on this uh, uh, even months ago that I saw Lara Trump moving into that that chair, co-chair position, the RNC, and that she would, in fact, uh, bleed off, grift a lot of the money out of the RNC. So it will affect other Republican races. Um yeah, and, and and to a significant extent, it's not something that's uh, uh, that that's not going to be a big factor in limiting the success of other Republican races. So uh, that certainly will put a leaning towards uh, a more Democrats uh, taking taking positions. Sixty two. Uh, ju- I just heard that Representative Ken Buck from Colorado is resigning immediately. He represents the district that Lauren Boebert wants to run for a November election, but since she is already serving, someone else will have to finish out Buck's term. Will this be the catalyst to ousting Mike Johnson? Will others follow Ken Buck and just being so disgusted that they quit? Uh, I do see that Ken Buck is trying to put pressure on the GOP uh, because he's um, he's had it wants to wash his hands of everything he sees going on. Um, I also see that looks like we may, may see the fact the Democrat take that seat or replace Ken Buck. Uh, and I do see other Republicans following his footsteps. There are two or three, there are two or three here. Looks like they're going to follow his steps before the November election. Uh, yeah, so it's going to have an effect. But I think the other part of the question was, will it, will it lead to the ousting of Mike Johnson? Um, eventually it's going to help. Um but I, I think there's other things coming here for Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, uh, that will cause even Republicans uh, to want to remove him. So won't necessarily have to have all the Democratic votes, per se. 61, High Sterling, you mentioned having done readings for hybrids, extraterrestrials. Are readings for hybrids different than for Homo sapiens sapiens? Do they feel different to you? Um, yes, uh, the sessions are different because they're highly connected to the other side, highly connected to their mission here on Earth. Uh, if they're working on free energy or health or science breakthroughs or world peace, they're highly connected. So their questions come from a very uh, high, very connected source. And uh, my team aligns with that very easily. So yeah, um, they're, they're down here on a mission. Hybrids are not down here to have fun. They're actually down here on a mission. And, and that's why my team easily connects with them. And yes, I can tell. 60, hi, Sterling. Judge McAfee is now dismissing six of the charges against 45 and five defendants, thereby delaying the trial slated for August. Is he on the take for 45? No, I, I don't see him on the take. I see him trying to bring forth a very balanced approach. And it looks like some of these six charges or what that might in fact come back around again and still be reinstated with more evidence. So uh, no, I, I don't. My team's saying he's not on the take, but he is trying to be fair and balanced as well as he can. So uh, the RICO case is still completely intact and that's going to be moving forward. 59, will Louis DeJoy try to interfere in the 2024 presidential election? Will he be ever removed? Uh, I, I don't see he's going to try to create havoc in the 2024 election. Looks like we have a lot of uh, controls, back-end auditing using blockchain, distributed ledger technology. So it does not look like, I don't see uh, a lot of manipulation coming from DeJoy. Uh, too many uh too, too many interactions with other organizations that are watching over the election uh, that are going to keep it fair. So I, I don't see they're not they're not they're telling me he's not going to have a any kind of a, a bad effect on the election or try to do an end run in the back end back end systems. Uh, don't see it. No. Fifty eight. Is it better for the U.S. security to outright ban TikTok due to possible security breaches and propaganda campaigns by China? Uh, well, you know, uh, it, it, this is a very broad topic. The uh, Chinese Communist Party is obviously controlling ByteDance, the parent company. I talked about this earlier. The, the data is already compromised. So uh, the, the app that exists on mobile phones is already compromising uh, personal data. So uh, the ban across governments, yeah, I mean, that that, that is actually going to go on. That's starting in place right now. Um, 
I think the, the question is, is it better for security outright? You know, uh, the horses are out of the barn. So, yeah, I mean, anything that we can do to try to turn that around is going to be helpful. Uh, but, you know, it's not like other social media apps that also compromise personal data on mobile devices. So uh, we have we have a large, large scale problem worldwide. Uh, all governments do. All countries do. Um, but an outright ban, this is something that has to be uh, managed and it has to be done incrementally. And uh, there are security breaches going on. So uh, that's about as, as close as my guides and nails want to get. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only, uh, but uh, data is compromised. 57, do you believe that some people might know without being ill that their time to pass on is coming soon so they get their affairs in order? Yes, absolutely. I see it as a very common occurrence. Uh, a number of individuals know, their soul knows when their time is coming. And I've seen this across actually thousands of people uh, that either I've interacted with directly or heard secondhand stories where in, in an unusual way, individuals, almost their soul knew they were getting ready to pass and went around and, and told people out of the blue, they love them, they always think about them. And, and people they would talk to say, that's kind of odd because, you know, that person's never said that to me before. Or, you know, they always like, what's up? And, you know, your soul does know when your time's coming. So I, I do see that. It's a very common occurrence. 56, hi, Sterling and team. John Barnett, a Boeing whistleblower, was recently found dead in the U.S. He stated publicly that Boeing was fitted uh, with substandard parts on assembly lines and uncovered serious problems with the oxygen systems. Was there foul play involved in his apparent suicide? It's John Barnett. I, I don't get there's foul play here. Uh, and, you know, it's unfortunate, uh, but I do get um, that this was by his own hand. Um, so this is a suicide. Remember, you never get off the planet if it's not your time. And so this um, it was part of his life path. But I don't see foul play here. You know, um, everybody's life path does contribute to forms of stress and the way you're living your life. Uh, but my team's saying that it's not foul play here. Um, it was actually, uh, it was a suicide. 55. Hello, Sterling. My question is, was the death of Mitch uh, McConnell's sister-in-law in Texas by her Tesla backing into a pond and she drowned in accident? Or was she killed to send a message to Mitch McConnell to step down from Senate leadership? Uh, Angela Chow, I think was her name. That was a sister. I think she was a billionaire. Um, I don't see this as foul play. I see this as a, a human error and uh, that this is not something that's driven by a covert operation to affect Mitch McConnell. Uh, now, my team is saying uh, pretty much 100% human error here. Remember, you don't get off the plan, but it's not your time. This is all part of her life path. Uh, but the question is, I don't see this connected to uh, Mitch McConnell and, and a covert operation to, uh, to affect him. 54, hi, Sterling and team. What's going on with Steve Bannon's appeal? Will a decision come by summer and a prison date follow? You know, I think he's under uh, executing an appeal right now. Um, I see that appeal will get dismissed, and I do see prison time. It looks like he'll get one to two years here, and it may start by the end of the year or the beginning of next year, but it looks like a one to two year uh, prison. I've always seen Steve Bannon uh, serving some jail time for entertainment purposes only, uh, but it looks like the appeal that's ongoing right now will get dismissed. 53, YouTube is demonetizing some YouTube channels without telling them what the issue is. YouTube keeps a lot of hate channels up and running and then gets rid of good channels. Will there be another platform like YouTube that we that will be better going forward? Um, no, you know, I, well, unfortunately, uh, in terms of UGC or user-generated content, um, I do see that YouTube will be uh, very much the leader for many, many years. There'll be other co-competitors, uh, but uh, YouTube uh, looks like in terms of UGC content will be the leader. So they'll still maintain a, a very strong position, but it does look like they're, you know, they'll be more equitable in the future here at having cases or, or appealing some channels that were taken down or demonetized. So they're going to kind of expand that effort in terms of goodwill and um, 
creating much more of an equitable environment. 52, do extraterrestrials have their own kind of Bible? No, they don't follow any specific text. Uh, they do have a, a wealth of information, are very aligned to the one source, the one force. They understand things empirically, telepathically. Um, they don't use a guiding text like a Bible. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, when you're connected telepathically and really in line with the one source, one force, you're getting the information directly from the source. Um, yeah, so they don't create, you know, the Bible, you know, obviously there's thousands of versions on earth. There have been thousands of individuals that have been involved in uh, developing that text. Uh, and so humanity had a large role to play in that. Uh, but no, no, extraterrestrials don't follow a text like a Bible. 51, hello, Sterling. In the future, if we can count on having telepathic ability, will the telepathic ability result in the dis dissolution of secret societies and groups such as high-level uh, Masons, Federalist Societies, and the World Economic Forum backroom arrangements? No, not really. Uh, you know, telepathic ability uh, gives you a lot of knowledge in the universe, and it's all, also like connecting a cell phone to another individual or groups of individuals. So, you know, not everybody's going to have access to all the same information, all the individual at the same time. There's still going to be uh, nefarious actions in societies worldwide, uh, but telepathic communications will make it much easier for people to vet out the truth. That That's all very true, uh, but it won't stop, you know, malintent and groups uh, existing worldwide. 50. Hello, Sterling and team. Backers of an effort to remove Wisconsin Republican Assembly Speaker Robin Voss from office over his poor support of 45 announced Sunday they've collected enough signatures to force a recall vote. Will he be recalled? You know, it, it does appear to me he's going to get recalled. Um, so unfortunately or whatnot, I, I, it looks like uh, for some reason, that looks like it's going to successfully go through to a recall. 49, can a soul change his or her soul family? What happens if some souls in the soul family move to higher or lower levels? Do they remain as part of the same soul family, or are they moved to another one? You know, in most all cases, we remain with our unique soul families of thousands of members. Now, there are thousands of levels in heaven. And it is true that at some point, as you get to the higher levels uh, within heaven, uh, you may be called on for other duties. So you may be called on to do things, the roles of like ascended masters or something near to that, in which case you may move to another unique soul family. So it is all part of an evolutionary process. But by and large, many individuals during the, the several hundred levels they might be going through in heaven are really staying aligned with their same unique soul family. Remember, and all unique soul families come down to earth at various times in groups or subgroups, uh, to play certain roles. So as they come down, uh, some might be your children, your parents, your stepchildren, your your boss, your best friend, uh, girlfriend's boyfriend. So you know, they play different roles in your life. 48, hello, Sterling and all of your team. There have been many people that when taken aboard UFO say they have been shown videos of catastrophic future world events that the sun CME's coronal mass ejections will soon knock out our satellite systems and turn us back into the dark ages. There's people to prepare for world disaster, stockpile food, water, and find protective shelter. Many of the super wealthy are now building underground shelters and tunnels to go when the disaster strikes. Is this all a false flag from ETs to scare humans into cleaning up the planet or is this the coming of dark government agencies? What do your guys say about the truth of these ET scenarios? Well, uh, you know, well, these are warnings. Uh, so I've talked to my team and, and many extraterrestrial groups uh, on a regular basis about all this. These are warnings to the earth. Uh, this is not actually a fait complete. It's not going to happen. Uh, you know, but what's interesting is uh, extraterrestrial groups feel the need to put the fear in, in a lot of humanity 
Um, because it's almost like if you don't take care of what you're supposed to and, and guard against nuclear weapons and catastrophe and, and try to strike a balance around world peace, uh, these events could happen. Um, I don't see them happening. They're not playing out. And my the extraterrestrials I deal with and talk with are saying it's, it's really not going to happen, but they're trying to put enough fear, if you will. Uh, a lot of times fear can create motivation uh, to do the right thing. So, um, you know, they're going to be, uh, intermittent events, certainly where some satellites are knocked out with coronal mass ejections from the sun, nothing that wipes them all out, for example, and wipes out all communication. Uh, but there are there are subgroups of events that will occur, continue to occur on Earth here, but nothing that, that tends to wipe out humanity. So uh, th these are warnings, essentially, absolutely. Okay, 47, the countdown. Hello, Sterling. Other psychics use the phrase that they're following the energy of a person or situation that is leading to a possible outcome but could change depending on free will, situations, etc. You don't use that phrase, but clearly speak to what you see from your guides and angels as the outcome. Do your guides and angels focus on the most energetic outcome or do they focus on multiple energetic outcomes and the most likely ones uh, that you want to report to us? You know, no, it has nothing to do with energetic outcomes. It has to do with referencing the Akashic records. So the Akashic records are the record in the universe for everything for past, present, and future. Now, free will does affect, you know, three components of someone's life path. And I talked about this on last week's show. I call it the three S's, uh, the speed of your life path, the scope, and the scale of achievement. So uh, when my when my team, when questions are asked, um, all of my angelic team, they reference the Akashic records. And you know, we try to demonstrate that that's where these hot off the presses come from. So when people ask certain types of questions, going to the Akashic records, now there could be some minor differences in the way they play out. So maybe in instead of like 10 indictments, there's six indictments for an individual or they go to jail for one to two years instead of five years. You know, there's there's some things that will that may be some minor uh, differences, but by and large, the information that comes out of the Akashic records is a pure record. So it has it, it, the Akashic records is not based on probabilities. So I think I think that's an important thing to to denote here. Uh, it's really kind of an Akashic records reference that my team makes all the time. That's where they get the information. Forty six. Do you see money in offshore accounts being held in the names of 45 children and grandchildren? Yes, uh, absolutely. In Russia, Antigua, and even parts of Switzerland. So I do see money being held offshore. Absolutely. 45. Good morning, Sterling and team. I have a question about a Hachiko, a dog that is memorialized in Shibuya, Japan. Uh, for his unending loyalty to his owner who passed away while at work. He used to wait every day for nine years at the train station, waiting for his owner to arrive and never came. His death anniversary was recently on March 8th. Uh, do you know if he was finally able to meet his owner that passed away? Did the owner greet a Chico when he crossed over. Yeah, a absolutely. A uh, very strong connection between was a Hachiko and the owner. And I see they had something like 17 lifetimes together. That's a lot of lifetimes with an animal. So that animal was with 17 lifetimes with this individual. And I think we're crossing like 100 years or something. My team's talking about this might have been 100 years ago or something. So, uh, but yeah, they, they absolutely did meet up. Uh, very familiar with each other. Uh, again, this was like the 17th lifetime they had, this last one. Uh, wonderful to see that kind of companionship. Remember, animals are from the angelic realm. They're here to help us. They're here to teach us lessons. 44, good morning, Sterling and team. Are some people unable to read by qualified psychics? My husband and I have visited some of the best psychics, and while I always get a reading that plays out accurately, my husband's readings never play out. I understand the free will component, but I feel there's something else going on. You know, uh, there's two key factors that, that get involved here with any kind of a reading. You know, one is inherently uh, the background or the skill of the psychic medium, right? And some people have good days, bad days. Uh, but, it, you know, there's a skill factor with the psychic medium that's being uh, talked to here. The second factor is um, how open somebody is. So, you know, a lot of times if, if individuals are not open at all, right, they try to close themselves down. Um, that can limit, that can make it very difficult to extract 
you know, real information. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't look at the Akashic records and tell what's going on with the individual. So that speaks more to the way the psychic medium is working. Uh, but uh, it is true that some individuals are kind of closed down, shut down. They're nervous, angry, depressed, uh, don't believe in any of it. You can actually shut yourself down. It really shuts down what's called that imagination channel in the brain that connects to the universe that makes it easier for the psychic medium uh, to connect with you and start reading. So yeah, there, there's two fundamental factors there. And it looks like your husband may be affected by one or both of them. 43, last Friday, the Defense Department released lengthy report that stated they found no evidence that any extraterrestrial intelligence visited Earth and that no extraterrestrial spacecraft or technology is being hidden from the public. If ET public disclosure is coming in the next few years, why would the military U.S. government continue actively issuing such misleading information? Are they unaware that disclosure is coming? Well, it's an ongoing tactic by many world governments uh, to be to not lean into extraterrestrial knowledge. One of the big reasons is there's advanced technology that governments cannot necessarily defend against, so they don't want to panic the public. The second reason is a lot of technology being shared by extraterrestrials that some military vendors are using to their advantage. So to create other types of defense technology, uh, aircraft technology, propulsion technology. So there's an economic money greedy effect going on here, as well as an inability for governments to say, look, we know all this advanced technology, uh, but we have no way to defend it. We can't replicate it. Uh, but that's all going to change here just in a few short years. So this has been going on for hundreds of years now, you know, uh, not talking about uh, what's going on really the rest of the universe. Yeah, it's interesting. 42. Thank you, Sterling and Linda. We know that 45 is highly influenced by oligarchs, the same individuals that have their hand in government operations around the world. They receive money from the sale of arms, missiles, drugs, human trafficking, etc. Will this network ever be brought down and will the U.S. be able to use AI to block them? Yes, uh, just within a few short years here, artificial intelligence will be demonstrably helpful in tracking, uh, financing, money around the world, um, how assets are changing hands. It'll be able done in, in, in fractions of a second. You'll be able to put requests out to an AI engine. It'll be able to determine where money's going, where assets are being held. Um, so you really won't be able to hide from, from anything very shortly here as artificial intelligence and what they call LLMs or large language models become implemented. Um, it, it creates the access to wealth of trillions of pieces of information uh, instantaneously. So it, it will be much harder for the dark networks to hide. Um, and and the may even be brought down, many will, by world governments. 41, are Earth angels able to prevent or interfere with mishaps like plane crashes in order to keep souls in their earthly bodies? Are guides able to perform any of the roles Earth angels perform? So Earth angels perform many tasks on a human level, not a superhuman or supernatural level. What I mean by that is that, for example, let's take an angel or a guy, your birth angel. Birth angels are around to save your life, to keep you on the planet. So if you're in a fatal car accident or near fatal, they'll respond to an emergency scene with other paramedics, save your life and leave. Uh, Earth angels perform more human tasks. So if they know, for example, you're about to be kidnapped, they'll actually get a message to move over to that area of the city and prevent that kidnapping. So it's more of a, uh, Earth angels are down here, more like human, human con uh, construct. And they're here to interact on a very human level, uh, not a supernatural, superhuman level, the way angels and guides do. 40, hello, Sterling. I just watched the miniseries about Chernobyl, and I was alarmed at how close we came to annihilation of the human species. All Russia cared about was keeping the disaster secret. I was wondering if extraterrestrials helped out with containing the blow-on reactor. Did the Russians fix the rest of the reactors so that can't can happen again? Uh, yes to all of your questions. Uh, extraterrestrials were very active in guarding against a major catastrophic event with Chernobyl. 
Uh, in fact, there were a lot of uh, UFOs and UAPs shown in that area at that time. And yes, the, the reactors, remaining reactor composition there in Chernobyl um, is contained. Within a few short years, there'll be technology that will be able to dismantle nuclear reactors completely with extraterrestrial technology. And I say within a few years, uh, the... I'm going to say the offering of new technology will be there. It'll take a while, many years to implement it, uh, but that's coming. 39, hello, Sterling. Lately, I've been waking up around the witching hour, 3.30 a.m., feeling uneasy or even a little scared. I recently had a death in the family. I wonder if the death experience is waking me up at that hour or if there's really something to the idea of the witching hour. Well, you know, the witching hour is mythical. Uh, it's a myth. You know, I think people try to align that in history with uh, that's the hour that, you know, the quote unquote devil or low level spirits try to connect with you. So it's all a myth. Um, it looks to me like you're waking up due to family members trying to ping you, trying to get your attention. Uh, so no, no truth to the witching hour per se, but it looks like in your case, some family members are trying to ping you uh, and get your attention. So I would urge you in the waking hours to learn to communicate with them or ask them to come around and uh, they'll stop disrupting your sleep. 38, you've indicated in the past that thought instantly manifests into reality on the other side. Does the same hold true for animals? If so, what are animals inclined to manifest in the afterlife? You know, it's absolutely true. Even on earth here, as we manifest clearly, or re clearly articulate what we envision, we can create that reality. It happens uh, by tenfold, by a thousandfold on the other side in heaven. So as you think it, you, you create that reality. In terms of animals, animals, uh, as they're part of the angelic realm, are always kind of in a love space and a playful space. So whenever I connect into animals, a lot of times they're they're really manifesting a lot of playtime, large open fields, grassy fields, a lot of playtime, a lot of relaxation time, a lot of regenerative time. But that is usually what I, I see animals manifesting, along with trying to help individuals crossing over. So they do split their time between helping individuals that may need uh, and animal support and crossing over because individuals may feel more comfortable with an animal, you know, greeting them. So th that's kind of what's going on. And on that note, that concludes uh, part one of today's Sunday show being recorded for Sunday, March 17th, 2024. We will be posting and creating uh, part two of the show. As always, if you need to reach me, go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the book session tab. Uh, until we meet again, I'm going to send out a lot of goodwill and tremendous love to you and your families. Take care. I'll see you in part two.